Gary has extensive experience on both Wall Street and Main Street as an MBA and CFA in various roles such as equity research, corporate development, business development, consulting, and corporate financial planning and analysis. In addition to Mr. Kane's background in finance, he's a chartered financial analyst and a member of the Long Island Business News 40 individuals in the age of 40. Long Island Business News considered war, considers award winners to be the rising stars in the Long Island business community. Currently, Mr. Kane is the founder and managing partner of Chimera Strategies, LLC, provider of strategic advisory services on business sales and divestitures and business acquisitions. Chimera uses either traditional investment banking processes and procedures or Chimera's own M&A light package, either way tailored to the situation. My pleasure to introduce Gary Kane. Thanks, Larry, and thanks for sending me after these two. I, <laughs> I got a tough, uh, tough act to follow here. Somebody has to do it. But actually, it's a very good segue uh, to what I want to do because, uh, in addition to the, and different from this morning when they were all startups and seeds and ABC and FGY and some other alphabet soup, these are real businesses, uh, real people doing real businesses over several years. They have sales, they have profits. It's not necessarily about technology. Technology is a means to an end. The end is a real business. So I'm glad that uh, it was a segue. So I'm going to talk about uh, how to form your exit strategy. And I'm going to take a little bit different approach, uh, like I said to the other speakers. This is after funding. This is after raising. This is after Z and C and Y. Uh, and it's not tech. This is uh, all business. This is businesses that are mature, that are private, that are small with sales and profits. Not just tech, but all businesses. 45%, 45%, 45%, is that a good number or a bad number? It's all relative, right? 45%. If this was a room full of baseball players, 45% is a tremendous number because if you're Ryan Howard and you're batting 270 or 27%, you're making $20 million a year. If it's a room full of NFL coaches, and this, this guy should look familiar. Um, and I'm a giant fan. Um, if your win-loss record was 48%, guess what? You're fired. Although, you do get a job the next day for more money. <laughs> Can't figure that one out, but that's okay. But, this is neither of those. This is a room full of small business owners, or potential small business owners here locally. And 45% has another meaning for this type of of folks. According to Pratt Stats, and Pratt Stats is the premier database for private merger and acquisition transactions uh, nationally, what that means is basically small private companies that were bought and sold anywhere between zero and ten million revenue approximately and in all industries, 45 percent is the selling price per sales of a business. So if my business was a million dollars in sales, on average, I would get $450,000. If I was in the retail trade, 33%. Wholesale trade, 41%. Manufacturing, 49%. And uh, business services, 52%. And technology, again, is not up there. Uh, I consider it really more of a means to an end. I don't consider it a business itself. At the end of the day, you need to have a product or have a service and sell it. It's not about the technology. It's about what the technology enables. Uh, and it could be one of these four. Uh, and these four are, are a lot of the businesses here on Long Island. So I ask you, with 45%, keep calm because hard work pays off. But does it? Blood, sweat, tears, 10, 20, 50 years, uh, obviously Andrew and, and Dan excluded, um, and get 45 cents on the dollar, $450,000 for a million dollar in revenue business. That's not so good, at least for my opinion. So what, do you, what can we do? How can we get that better? Well, first, you got to figure out how you get that number. And uh, I'm going to tell you what EBITDA means. Uh, I don't think Andrew's still here, but I can tell you what EBITDA means. 
So how do you value a business? Let's start with that. Let's get a baseline. Let's understand where the numbers come from. Then you know if you're, you're increasing or decreasing from that. I would suggest there are two, two ways to do this. Uh, the market method being one. Percentage of sales. Uh, the easiest, simplest, 45%. Everybody knows what sales is. It's a percentage of sales. The second is a multiple of EBITDA. Uh, Andrew earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, really kind of cash flow is it, sort of where you're trying to get to. Um, more complicated, EBITDA means many things to many people. Uh, there's an adjustments involved, but uh, a term that, that a lot of people use, a multiple of EBITDA. Second method, income method. Uh, present value of future cash flows. Hopefully you've heard about that. Uh, basically, what will this business do over time? and then discount it back uh, to the present based on a risk return rate. Uh, and then an income capitalization rate, which is basically similar to real estate, where you take the, the, the rent roll and you basically put a cap number on it. Same idea, except in this case it's free cash flow. So, this is why we're here. How do we form one? What does an exit strategy mean? How do we get better than 45%. Okay. Just a little more space, sorry about that. So, if you're one day or 100 years away from an exit strategy, I would recommend you start doing a few things today. And they're not, they're not revolutionary, but they're things that I see every day when I meet small businesses that are not happening. And I want to point them out and show you um, because they should be, and they do contribute to value in the long run. I would suggest there are three key steps that you should literally start, well, maybe not today, but tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, take the rest of the day off, Larry. <laughs> Step one, positioning. I would suggest there are 6.5 actions uh, to this step, to positioning. Positioning your company for an exit in the future. Uh, let's start with the T account because we're just past April 15th. So some nightmares for the accountants in the room. Well, I don't think they do T accounts anymore. But anyway, let's start with the first six. First one. And they're not revolutionary, but I don't see them. Have a budget and a sales projection. No, no disrespect to Andrew, but having a budget and a sales projection allows you to manage the company better. Uh, once you have it, you update it, you use it, you roll it forward. If you're managing your budget and you know what your costs are and you know what your sales are, you can have higher EBITDA and if you manage those sales, you can have higher sales. Higher sales, higher EBITDA, higher value. Hire and retain good employees. At the end of the day, your employees are really your assets in the business, especially in a service business. And they're by far and away valuable. And the more happy they are, the more productive they are, the higher your sales are, and the higher your EBITDA is. It's not rocket science, but I don't see it very often out there. And again, higher sales and higher EBITDA equals higher valuation. Uh, Andrew talked about this in his 48-hour book. I couldn't agree more. Uh, strong processes and procedures. If the owner does get hit by a bus, there's nothing there and there is no business. But if the processes and procedures are written down, if they're improved on, if they're streamlined, if they're made better, then not only can the owner get hit by a bus, but you can reduce costs, which equals higher EBITDA, or you can improve sales, which also equals higher sales. Again, higher sales, higher EBITDA, higher valuation. This is one of my favorites. Pay taxes. What the heck am I saying? What's wrong with you? Um, but pay taxes. Uh, clean up your books. A business is not a personal piggy bank. Oh, I got $100,000 in cash and green, blah, 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 not reporting it. You're, you're reducing your sales by $100,000. Lower sales, lower value. Oh, I've got a country club membership and I've got a, a new Bentley on the, on the business and I'm paying $5,000 a month for the Bentley to lease. Higher expenses, lower EBITDA. It's, it's, it's just basic math. The, a business is not your personal piggy bank. It is a business. It should be treated that way. The higher your sales, 
The higher EBITDA, the more it's worth. Reinvest in the business. If your business makes money, that's not your bonus. That's not all profit for you. If you have old equipment, if you have old software, if you have old technology, that's cost of productivity. The less productivity you have, the lower your sales and EBITDA are. You get the trend here. But lower sales and lower EBITDA, lower valuation. And the last one, and again, this one was also what, uh, what Andrew and Dan had said. Get bigger. Sorry, guys. Size really does matter. Um, the bigger you are, not just the number, uh, six times a million versus six times a hundred million, six times a million or eight times or nine times a hundred million. The bigger the business, the more liquidity, the more buyers, the easier it is to do a $200 million deal versus a $20 million deal. All very true. Getting bigger is, is the key to multiple expansion. And then the half action item, and I say it's a half because I don't do it, and I say you should do it, and I bet you a lot of people don't do it, but you should. Work less. Hmm. Work less. Well, I wish I could take my own advice. But uh, work less because the more you work, the more you're involved in the business, the more you have the relationship with the customers, the more you have the whole process in your head, the less your business is worth. If you have strong processes and procedures, you have budgets, you have good employees, you're reinvesting in the business, guess what? You can work less and your business is worth more. Counterintuitive, but true. First question I ask when I meet a business looking to exit, the first question I ask is, how much, do you spend in the, how much time do you spend in the business and what do you do? Oh, I'm not no pencil pusher. I'm 60 hours a day out there spraying the grass myself. Well, guess what? Your business isn't worth very much. And that's one of the key questions I use. It's very counterintuitive, but it's true uh, because that means you've extricated yourself from the business and the business can run without you. <clears throat> Step two, the right team. Six key players in the right team for when you look to do that exit. Uh, let's go with the nice T account again. Six key players. First one, mergers and acquisitions advisor. Shameless plug warning. Chimera Strategies could be your mergers and acquisitions advisors. Shameless plug warning. Second, a good attorney, and not, uh, not my cousin Vinny. You need an attorney that understands transactions. You need an attorney that understands patents. Uh, attorneys do have specialties and you need to use the right attorney in the right situation. Uh, an LLM in tax or a master's in tax, which is a lawyer as well. Uh, the tax uh, code has the accountant side and the legal side. Both are important. The accountant obviously works on the, 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 the financial side. You need to have a lawyer on the legal side. And of course, an accountant is a key player. Your financial advisor. Do you have enough money to retire? Is this deal make sense to you? Do you have a trust? Do you have an estate? Do you have cash flow? Do you, do you need to know these things up front. You need to minimize taxes up front. These are the things a financial advisor can bring. And the same with the insurance broker. Are you properly uh, termed out or whole life insurance? These are the decisions that you make beforehand, before you walk into that day and sign that document and get your money. These things you should be thinking of way before and, and set them up over time. Slide, uh, step three, execute. That's usually where a lot of people fall down. But that's obviously the key step is execution. Execute on the first six and then when you're ready, or six and a half, sorry, and then when you're ready, uh, execute on the next step or the six key players. And once you do those things, that 45% can grow. And over time, as you continue to work those six and a half uh, action items and continue to put together the right team, there's no telling where that 45% can go. Uh, 